What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I was unpacking my apartment the other day and found one of my old force ball gadgets. So those of you who are not familiar with it, it is a gyroscope based uh, electronic sort of like wrist um, training machine. I kind of, I started playing with it, I looked inside, there's quite a bit of electronics, there's a PCB board on the inside and I wanted to kind of make a quick video of me disassembling it, kind of figuring out how it works. Uh, of course mechanically it's just a uh, simple gyroscope which rotates on itself as well as the axes of the ball. I'm going to give you a really quick demo before we get started. So normally it comes with a string which you can use to kind of pull out of the gyroscope in order to get it started. You can also get it started on a table so if you want to roll it really hard and get it started then you can start this doing this motion and as you will see really quickly it builds up momentum and I can already feel the resistance but I, but as we go further you can see the lights light up more and more and as we get to the higher speeds this takes a couple of uh, seconds give me just a moment the gyro lights up completely and at this point the movement is very very fluid so I'm barely moving my wrist all I'm having to do is kind of exercise my tendons in the arm so I, I don't know I'm not a fitness expert I don't know how effective this really is for my wrist obviously if you spend a few minutes doing this then it starts hurting quite a bit but I'm interested in the electronics so let's take it apart let's see what's inside let's learn a few things and uh, yeah let's just jump right into it All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I'm in no way, shape or form sponsored and or commissioned by Powerball in any way, but I wanted to demonstrate that they have different uh, kind of balls for sale on their website. So as you can see, some of them have like the numeric display, just like I have on top here, which displays the number of, or I guess the RPM values that you get as you start playing with it. There's different features. I encourage you to check it out if you're in the, into that sort of thing the official ones as you can see are from 39 to 99 usd the one that i got here is actually from ebay it is called a force ball so it is kind of an imitation a chinese knockoff if you wish uh, so that's what we're going to be disassembling today but just to quickly kind of get a quick overview of the module itself like i said there's a sensor which calculates the rpms i've already looked at it there's a sensor which picks up the field created by the gyro. I actually, uh, I think the battery died on this thing uh, very quickly after I got it. So that hasn't been working very well. But um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, there is a board. I don't know if it's just for the LEDs. I don't know if there's some kind of a circuit that uh, harnesses this motion, but it would, it's gonna be very interesting to see. So that's kind of what it looks like. As you can see, it holds against the sides of the uh, plastic ball itself, and then there's a mass that's spinning on its own. As I mentioned earlier, there's a cord that you can kind of put inside of this hole, wrap around it a few times, and then pull on in order to get it started, but uh, that is long gone. So anyways, let's get right into uh, disassembling this particular force ball. All right, so the first thing that comes off is, of course, the display on top. I've already tried it before, but you can pry it with a screwdriver. It's just little clips. So as you can see, two batteries. There's the sensor which detects the field created by the gyroscope itself. Uh, we're not going to be looking at that too much. I mean, it's just a display and a counter. I'm guessing uh, they might have some kind of a controller on the other side. We'll take a look at it in a second. But let's, uh, let's focus on the force ball itself kind of peel off the plastic. I thought I was gonna need to cut it, but actually it's just a band which is sitting on top of it, hiding the screws. So as you can see, it's made out of two parts. Fairly simple to disassemble. All right, so now we should be able to kind of pry the shell open, so to speak. If I kind of force it apart, it's sitting in there pretty tight. I'm guessing if I shoving a screwdriver into these clips i can take it apart pretty easily so two outer shells uh here we have the magnet that's kind of stationary and and wedged in the middle of those shells let's take it off 
and as we remove it we can see the circuit board which is inside of this force ball so I've already looked at it a little bit inside but as you can see the circuit board is made out of four LEDs the circuit is very simple it's four LEDs and then two inductors or coils so what happens is or pretty much what the physics behind this are is the magnet which is going to be stationary and always kind of against the board as you spin you will create a magnetic field uh, or the magnetic field is going to stay but the inductors are going to be rotating at a speed which will allow them to generate current on the leads so if you want to if you want to if you want to say this is some uh, is this is a mini uh, generator so to speak so this has the same principle of functionality as a motor for example so imagine in your motor you have um, you're spinning a shaft and the magnetic field that is created in a obviously in a magnet based motor you will have a uh, current induction on your winding so the motor is going to be a bit different it's structured obviously not the same way as this but this has the same exact principles as a motor. So fairly straightforward. Uh, like I said, the, current, the circuit here is pretty much each one of the inductors feeds two of the LEDs. Two of them are sitting on one side of the ball. Two of them are sitting on the other. So still pretty cool to see. I didn't expect to be. I didn't expect this to be this uh, quite basic. I thought there was uh, a bit more to it. I even expected there to be maybe a very small rechargeable battery so to speak i thought there would be some motion detection but i guess i was wrong there might be something different in the power balls and in the real ones but not in the uh cheap chinese knockoffs but still very cool to see i'm assuming these leds are taking uh you know somewhere around 5 to 10 milliamps to run so these inductors must be generating 10 to 20 that would be my best guess um but there is no way for me to kind of tell from a data sheet. Uh, maybe if you have the size, you can kind of figure it out. All right, on the control board side, let's uh, take off the screws and see what is inside and how is this thing controlled and keeps track of your score, so to speak. A couple of screws, five to be exact. We can remove the batteries too before we uh, sort of dismantle it completely. Let's quickly do that right now. It's number one, number two. So I'm assuming it will have some kind of a, at least some kind of a microcontroller that's going to, you know, talk with the dis display on the other side and sort of catch the signals from the sensor. I can't imagine it being a very, very fundamental circuit, but should still be pretty simple yet interesting to see it also has a um, it has an automatic time off feature so i'm, I'm assuming it's going to be something very similar to like a hand watch or something of that nature let's um quickly pry it with a screwdriver here oh there's a there's one more screw that i missed let's take care of that Well, I guess we're not going to be looking at the controller after all, but I'm, uh, it's been protected, it's been coded, so that you can't, uh, I guess, tamper with it or anything. Um, obviously, touch pads for the two buttons that we have on top, and then huh, the way it talks to the LCD is pretty interesting. It actually has like a, I don't know if you, how well you can see it, but it has a contact pad and if you look at it just right, I don't know how well you can see it on your screens right now, there are sort of like rubber-ish contacts on that um, black strip in between the two, in between the two uh, pink strips and uh, what appears to be sort of like contacts for the LCD screen. Let me, let me see if I can remove the LCD screen as well. There's not going to be much to see there, but... Okay, so as you can see, that's the LCD screen. There are, huh, it is, uh, it is pretty interesting. I've never seen it done like that in electronics. But, like I mentioned, the only contacts are on along this black strip, so to speak. So this black strip carries the signals, I'm guessing, from the microcontroller. So that's 
that's really cool. Um, besides the microcontroller, like I mentioned, there is a sensor. There's a capacitor, obviously labeled on the board. So as you can see, there's a C3 right there, C2, C1, and then there is a what I'm uh, assuming to be a resistor. I think the R is kind of hidden, so it's R1. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole disassembly of the control board module. Thank you guys for watching, uh, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed me disassembling this force ball, and see you next time. Thanks again. Bye. By Earth. So once again, this is in the Z axis. You have 1G going down. If I tilt the module 